Medical marijuana should be named like the pharmaceutical companies name drugs. It should be named for how it makes you feel or act while you're under the influence of it, right? Like Focalin, that's an ADD medication that helps you focus on what you're doing. Abilify, that's a depression medication that gives you the ability to get through your day. That's why I think medical marijuana shouldn't be called like Sasquatch hair. They should give it names that describe what you're going to do when you take the medicine. It should be called like laugh at a dog. <laughs> or enjoy the doors. <laughs> so I'm Josh Gondelman and I'm a writer and a comedian and I live in New York City and it's, people call it Hamilton Heights. It's like the west part of Harlem. But I'm from Boston. I grew up in the suburbs and I lived in the city and that's where I started doing comedy. Uh, while I was in college at Brandeis, which is near Boston, but not inside of it. For the cut, uh, the first thing I ever did was when uh, my ex-girlfriend, who's also a really talented uh, writer, who is a really talented writer, I'm Deese, uh, she and I were asked to write a piece about our breakup together. So we did that together. And that was like how I started writing for them. Uh, for the cut, I also did this article where I tested and reviewed basically this penis numbing spray that's marketed towards premature ejaculators. And that was like a real uh, kind of a stressful article to write. It like caused some personal tension with my girlfriend. As a response to that article, I was certainly threatened with legal action from the CEO of that company. <laughs> Bring our guest. I think we definitely should. With us today, we have a uh, co-author of the popular Modern Seinfeld Twitter account. You can follow it at Modern Seinfeld. No! Oh, at, at oh, Seinfeld that's... Today. Shoot! At Seinfeld Today. I got the, the biggest <laughs> nod no. <laughs> Purple Mark style. Yeah. <laughs> the Modern Seinfeld Twitter is a Twitter account, so it's 140 character tweets that are basically contemporary Seinfeld Plots that would be on Seinfeld were it to exist in uh, 2013. The way it came about as a Twitter account was I started tweeting just a couple modern Seinfeld plots, like labeled as that, from my own account. And then Jack Moore, who I'm friends with from stand up, uh, started tweeting some back at me. And then by the time he, he was like flying, I think. And by the time he landed, he was like, you know what? This should be its own account. So he started the account. And then the next day we discussed like co-writing it. In 24, 48 hours it had exploded and just like with this crazy coverage all over the internet and I was getting calls from like television news stations that wanted to talk about it and I think it was immediately written up on like entertainmentweekly.com and wired.com and Mashable gave it a huge boost. I remember Somebody saying like just do C all the way down because that proportionally too. that's the one that comes up the most. I don't think. Whoa! Uh -oh. Shucks. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get that? <laughs> awesome. I, it was so casual. I put water down dozens of times a day. <laughs> so I'm a pretty nice guy, which is a thing that sociopaths say. I have definitely in comedy, I would say I have a reputation of being a pretty nice guy. It's only really been a negative briefly meeting people who I think are cynical or see niceness as a front for like people who can't hack it or like aren't um, seasoned or competent comedians. So I think meeting people and seeing that I'm genuine and not false in like how I treat people and also that like I am uh, capable on stage, it like goes a long way. Like someone being funny or being sincere goes like a long way with other comics. and. Uh, I think it, in a lot of ways, sets me apart on stage. One day we were eating lunch, which was a thing I let them do every day. This wasn't a special occasion. <laughs> and all the girls were giving this one little boy a really hard time. He was very, this little boy, Matthew, who was very popular because he had a lot of stickers and rarely pooped in his pants. And when you're four, that's all it takes. <laughs> so the girls are giving Matthew such a hard time. They're like, Matthew, marry me. Marry me, Matthew, marry me. No, don't marry her. Marry me. Me, Matthew, me. And he turns bright red, he doesn't know what to do, right? Uh, he's never been proposed to before, I imagine. <laughs> so finally, Matthew speaks up. He goes, I'm sorry, girls, but I'm going to marry Jeremy. We all turn to look at Jeremy, who's just standing there like this. 
<laughs> like, already asked his dad, bro. It's cool. <laughs> and why wouldn't they when you're four, gay marriage is all you want in the world? <laughs> Just a never ending slumber party with your best bro where you can play trucks until dawn if you want. <laughs> Plank trucks, also the funniest euphemism for gay sex, if you're wondering. <laughs> In terms of like the archetype of like comedian as outsider or dysfunctional person, I definitely have kind of the uh, the set of Jewish anxieties that you, like a Woody Allen might have expressed, but not to nearly that extent. And I also think, I think I break away from it and that I'm a pretty comfortable person in general in my own skin. Like I have nervousness about things and anxiety about things, but like overall I'm a very happy, well-adjusted person, as I think many people are that perform and write comedy but uh I, so i think it's like i think that's the for me the best way to be is to like not sand off the things that make me weird because i'm certainly not like the necessarily i don't see things in the same light as like the average or like typical person but it's nice to have that eccentricity without um feeling broken and i feel like very good most of the time and I feel like I have good fulfilling relationships with people and so I'm not like the I'm not like a tragic figure I'm just kind of like an affable weirdo I guess or like a friendly dweeb on stage I think the a phrase that I've used to describe myself is sweet dweeb <laughs> before so like that's I think that's I fit in the tradition of people who think about things in maybe a different or like weird way um, without feeling like an alienated person. I was once trying to brag as a, a humorous brag about like, oh yeah, I'm the kind of cocky guy that uh, performs for a thousand people and then six women want to have sex with me. And I was like, that is a poor yield. <laughs> so in terms of like career macro, I would love to, I would, I would love to write any kind of writing really. I'd love to write for television. But I'd also be super happy writing books and essays. And um, I stand up is something that I will always do and always love to do. And I will do until I like conceivably until I can't physically do it anymore. But uh, it's not the way I think I want to earn my income forever because I just don't. To get to a point where you can be comfortable, and I was just talking about this with a comic the other uh, last night. To get to the point where you're comfortable into your old age as a comedian, you have to achieve so much. Like you have to make it all the way to the top of what's possible. Like um, a Jim Gaffigan or a Dane Cook, or um, like probably Russell Peters is another guy that does it. Uh, Bill Cosby, you know, like you have to be so successful that your life isn't miserable when you're old and the touring that you do is on your own terms and you're not hustling for gigs. Uh, so I would love to do stand-up as long as I have words to say out loud to people. But I, it would be nice to have like a room to sit in and like a writing assignment, whether it be book or magazine writing or television writing. And that way like, you know, I can retire at some point and, and not worry about health insurance. That's like a big scary thing when you work for yourself. And I will, uh, and it's a big th scary thing when you don't. And I would like to reduce that anxiety as much as possible. So, you know, I guess my career goal is be able to afford health insurance forever.